Wow, I sure do love this mod. I really hope it doesn't curse out one of the composers. Fuck you, Ben. So, Freddy Nick Funkin, you all know it. You all probably love it. I, for one, personally love it. I love Newgrounds. I love rhythm games. It's a perfect mix. Hell, I've even tried to make a mod myself, and um, let's just forget about that. And just like so many other games, its mods are near synonymous with the main game itself. To be fair, the main game hasn't had an update in a while, so as we wait for the V-Slice, it gives the mods a chance to shine. Also, the drama surrounding it is stupid since game updates aren't fucking dummy. A Kickstarter up rewards progress or on a portal backers can access, but whatever. With about three years of mod content, there's been some truly exceptional mods that we've been graced with. Some personal favorites of mine would be Versus Allegro, which is getting an update soon, and Versus Cheeky. However, there's one mod that is undeniably my absolute favorite, and is what I think to be the best Friday Night Funkin' mod to exist. The reason? Because it's not like Friday Night Funkin' at all. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that many people know about it, despite it having three years of effort worth put into it. So, I'd like to give this mod an overview. This is... Before we talk about this mod, we must address this predecessor that it was built upon. Friday Night Funkin' vs. Hood Roundtable is a continuation of the Vs. Hood mod. Vs. Hood originally came out in 2021, and yeah, you can tell. Look, no shade to the original mod, but it's not too crazy or anything. It's very basic, but that's what I like about it. It's a nice grounded experience that can serve as a distraction from how chaotic mods used to be with their 1, 2, 3 aggression formula. In the mod, you fight Hood, a mysterious figure who decides to partake in a rap battle with you. There's also lots of cameos in the background as well, from Hex to Cappy. There's a ton of love for the modding scene. The songs themselves, although not divine or anything, can be nice to pop your head to and were pretty good for the time. After a few songs, he unveils himself and reveals that his head is just a floating orb. On the back is an insignia of the Omega symbol. He kind of gives off mid-fight masses vibes with the general proportions and the simple stickman-esque face. After that, you beat him, and that's that. It just kind of ends. You know, I was kind of expecting something more. I spoke too soon. Three, two, one, go! If you go to free play, a brand new song that was previously inaccessible is unlocked. This right here is when everything turns around. We fight a brand new mysterious character who looks to live in a completely different dimension. As we learn from the name of the song, this is Epsilon, a towering figure who is as dapper as he is intimidating. His design looks like a spiritual successor to Hood's, with him still having a floating head, but this time having six much more slender eyes. He also manages to keep up with the Greek theming, with his name deriving from the Greek alphabet. The song that plays is a complete departure from the base week, as the BPM is cranked up and you're tested as to whether you have the skills to face Epsilon. Imagine it as a secret boss of some sort. The song's general energy is unique as well, having it managed to be upbeat while using softer lo-fi instrumentation. Baby, is this a good song? If you've watched my 2000 sub Q&A, you already know that. Even nearly three years later, it's my favorite FNF song. Same goes for the Roundtable mix too. Not only that, but it's one of my favorite songs in general, separate from FNF. I'll often listen to the instrumental during my day-to-day -day routine. It's just that good of a song. I even have it as my alarm tone for waking up in the morning too. I can't escape Epsilon. But other than that, that's what the whole mod is. A perfectly fine experience that's able to not overstay its welcome. However, this isn't all the main developer of the mod, Foe, or is it Foe, because it's Foe, had in store. He would reveal in the Game Jolt post that Versus Hood would be extended. Some new art was shown as well, in the reveal of new characters, songs, weeks, mechanics, story, and extras. Praise Epsilon? 
After this announcement, many months would pass and we would get next to no updates aside from the occasional Twitter mention. That was until September of 2022 rolled around, where not only did we get a brand new trailer promising the release of the mod in the upcoming months, but we also got a new version of Epsilon with remixed vocals. Epsilon has a completely new voice, sounding deep and foreboding, serving as a contrast to the last one being similar to Hood's with it being much more gentle and quiet. Although I love the roundtable mix of this track, the original one's vocals almost flow seamlessly with the instrumental, serving as an instrument of the song itself. This isn't an issue with the new version. For example, I like the ending motif between the singers better than the original version. It's just an interesting thing that I noticed. Also, Boyfriend is completely replacing the song with a completely different voice. We can probably assume that for now, this is what Hood's updated voice is, as we have no other character to base it off as. At the time, this is all the extra content we received, as progress about the update went radio silent for months. That was until April 8th of 2023. Oh hey, that's two days before my birthday. When we got this. Now, we can finally talk about the mod. As I previously mentioned, Versus Hood Roundtable is an OC mod. Look, it's really good. And an extension of the Versus Hood mod created by Team Phobos, building off the little bits of the world that were laid out previously. This time, the mod has a completely new art style and coat of paint to help distance itself from base fungin. The mod opens up with mysterious narration from an unnamed character, them speaking almost omnipotently. Omega, can you hear me? Something has gone wrong. You must return to Dimension Alpha. You are the only one who can make this right. I believe in you. What a way to start off the mod. Already the music is a mob, and the UI has a complete overhaul too. The original mod was created in the mic'd up engine, but this one is made in the psych engine, allowing a much more open range of customization and its coding abilities. I don't know nearly enough about coding to name off all the differences though. This mod is divided into four weeks with some secret songs, taking place between Earth and Dimension Alpha, which is the area we originally see Epsilon in. Don't worry if you don't know about the story and its lore yet, I'll explain it in depth later. Week 1 is the first part of the main story. We actually play as Hood this time around, and we go up against four other characters that are similar to us. Their names are Delta, Psy, Sigma, and Zeta. They're some of the members of what's known as the Round Table, a coalition of representatives from 24 different tribes in Dimension Alpha, with each member representing their respective tribes. Although we don't see them all in the mod, we see a good deal of them. First up, we have Delta. Shady! How have you been? I've been alright. Just wanted to stop by and see how you've been. Well, I've been just peachy. I'm glad to hear. Oh yeah, I can't stick around for too long. Zeta wants to see me. Uh-oh. Have you been misbehaving? Well, not sure. He won't tell me what's up. He wants to see me in person. Spooky. I'm sure you'll be fine. Well, can you stick around just a little longer? Delta is an eccentric, kind person who is also friends with the remaining roundtable members on Earth. She's fun, energetic, and just all around super bubbly, and her song is indicative of that, with it being super upbeat and bouncy. Occasionally, she'll interject with quips to mess around with Hood, which serves as a great way to show off a bit more of her character. It's the first song and it's already one of the best, starting the mod off strong. Here's some of the song. Shady.
again sometime soon, all right? Hello, how can I help you? Yo, hey, Sai. Oh, hello. I haven't seen you in a bit. How have you been? I'm good. Why are you here? You know I'm working, right? Just wanted to check in, hang out a bit. Eh, I'm not exactly busy. I can spare a few minutes. Next on the list, we have Sai. Before, he was the record keeper of the round table, so he has naturally taken the librarian job on Earth. Sai is very forward and direct, contrasting Delta with his sternness. His song is a bit more technical as well, being much more low-key. Halfway through, we will also enter a dreamlike state where everything chills out and you're given the chance to sing your own solo. This is also the first appearance of many background cameos, with people like Shaggy, Yuri, and Amogus dueling up in the library. This was a prominent part in the original mod, and thankfully it's still retained in Roundtable. but I have to go. I've got work to do. Leave. Huh? I just wanted to say hi. We haven't talked in ages. Leave, or I'm gonna make you leave. Time for us to talk about the absolute Sigma that is Sigma. He's a hot-headed bouncer for a nightclub who was once good friends with Zeta. They have grown distant after disagreements on the ethics of Zeta's work. Sigma is brash and takes nothing from nobody, and that's pretty evident by him cursing at you multiple times throughout the song. The song itself is foreboding in its use of 808s, making Sigma out to be a brash and crude individual. Isn't he such a skibbity, phantom, tex, Ohio, yacht, rizzler? Oh yeah, he's also voiced by fan buds. I'm so sorry. <laughs>
Goodwill. Hey, there you are. Yo. Long time no see. How are you going, son? Fair. Sigma wasn't happy to see me. Aye, that man. Don't mind the bastard. Anyway, before we get to business, we've got some time to kill. Let's see what you got, boy. Last in the week, we have Zeta. After the collapse of the round table, he used his natural charisma and business know-how to form a nuts illegal weapons distribution ring. He uses his newfound love to live a comfortable life and also to support hood. Zeta is by far the most unique member in this week. He's the one with the highest social and economic status and also has three floating hands. Yeah, see, this bot has this little known thing featured throughout his characters called genetics. See, the members of the round table are from another dimension called Dimension Alpha, and is home to the aptly named Alpheans. And since we're living creatures made out of DNA, and since genes are prone to change in unusual ways that gives us mutations, you get the idea. Zeta is a prominent example with his multiple hands, but he's not the only one with mutations like this throughout the round table. Two other members are shown to have prominent mutations, but we'll get back to that later. Zeta's song is upbeat and chock full of his confident aura, having an almost cartoon villain-esque vibe. Although it isn't my favorite, it's still a great song. Even my least favorite songs are ones I can vibe to. That just goes to show how high the quality of music production is in the mod. Here it is now. <laughs> easy on you, boy. So, that was week one of the mod. Just from this, we've been getting a good baseline of our characters that's full of great songs. The quality of this mod can be gauged by this week alone, because if the mod was just this, it would still be a contender as one of the greats in the modding community. However, our journey is far from over, as our next destination will have us travel to Dimension Alpha to confront a familiar foe. Starting us off on this trek is Pi. Hello? Zeta sent me. Gamma! Epsilon Phonetic! He's not far from here. I'll get you to him safely. From there, you will talk to him. If anyone knows what we need to know, it's him. We are greeted by a tall figure that serves as a guide of our journey, known as Pi. Pi is the first person we meet within Dimension Alpha, and they are a tall, mysterious figure. Although she is neutral on the conflict regarding Epsilon, indifferent to its results, she is a common business associate of Zeta, explaining the easy passageway between the weeks. Her song is quite elegant and regal, using the piano, violin, and occasional beats to begin to show she is as powerful as she is collected, being able to manipulate time for the simple slam of her staff. Speaking of, the background work is absolutely gorgeous. It seems to be a cathedral, possibly? The stained glass clock is even functional as well, moving in tandem with the meter resets caused by Pi, and it even lines up with the time your device is on. I'll stop talking and let you listen to the song now.
Hello. Hey, so... Wait, Omega, it's you. Get out, Shredder. You aren't fit to walk in the light of our leader. Shred... What? I don't know what you're talking about. I just want to speak about Epsilon. Fine. Play the fool. You will be punished. For the penultimate opponent of week two, we fight against the ever-so-intense Gamma. He's a disgraced member of the round table. Instead of fleeing to Earth, he submitted to Epsilon's rule. It's pretty clear that Gamma does not like you at all. Noted by how halfway through he absolutely snaps. Gamma is unique in this way, as he's the only character that changes both his vocals and his animations throughout the song. Speaking of his song, it is so good. It utilizes musical storytelling too. See, the beginning of his section at the start of the song sounds an awful lot like Epsilon's song, which was probably done to show how absolutely devoted he is to him. Here's a quick comparison. stretch, but it's such a genius way to emphasize Epsilon's influence and power over the round table. I've never seen a mod utilize storytelling like this before. The instrumentation is among some of the best that this mod has to offer, and that's considering the entire soundtrack is amazing. With using usual church motifs like the organ and chanting, along with the electric guitar, it really does go to show that Gamma isn't someone to mess with. The background once again is beautiful, as we play within a church filled with butterflies, which would be a lot more calming if we were getting slammed by Gamma's sermons. Speak of Lord Epsilon. How about I take you to him? What? Yes, a valuable bounty. A traitor. I shall surely be rewarded for such a noble act. Finally. Welcome, Omega. Silence, then. You've been for too long. You are a coward. You have delayed your fate admirably, Omega, but no longer. We finally made it. The final boss of the mod, in a sense. And jeez, these guys keep getting taller. This, of course, is Epsilon, the vain, cunning usurper of the round table. After humans murdered someone he cared for more than even himself, his hatred has festered and grown. Now he will do anything it takes to make sure humanity suffers as he did. Epsilon's song is by far the longest within the main weeks, and it's the first song to not be named after the character you rap against. The name of the song is Confrontation, a reference to the first mod notifying you of him being unlocked. And just like the first mod, he still is confidently intimidating as outer. However, his voice is not as calming. The pure spite and vitriol can be felt from the energy of the song mixed with the fact that you're actively fighting for your life. You are a traitor, and Epsilon won't have any of that. What did you do exactly? We'll discuss that later. This song is also one of the most mechanically unique so far, as not only will the placement of the note bar shift, you're given an extra key to press in order to dodge Epsilon trying to stab you with his tentacles. Yes, these are not coattails, but in fact a genetic mutation. For the longest time I thought they were part of his outfit that he could control or at least had a mind of its own, but no, genetics. 
It's pretty cold though, let's be honest. We're fighting against it in what seems to be his throne room, Dallas in purple light. Behind his seat of state is a stained glass portrait showing every letter of the Greek alphabet to represent the round table. It's clever visual storytelling as Epsilon's throne is front and center to it, showing his power and influence over the rest of the round table. Though I wonder if this was always here or if it was made after the usurpation of the round table. There's also these weird glow stick thingies covering the room too. It's actually a type of Alphian object that grows in tandem with negative emotions. It's another way of showing how much Epsilon is fueled with rage. Oh, and it goes without saying, but the music is great too. It's similar to Epsilon's regular song, however, it's been refreshed and extended. It's far more energetic and upbeat, along with being substantially harder, requiring you to play both smarter and more efficiently. <laughs> That part you just heard for the overall vibe change is important to the story for some reason. Just the overall mood of the section is something that should be accounted for when it comes to the lore. I personally interpreted that section almost like Epsilon is trying to reason with Hood to try to understand where he's coming from, but their attempt at a truth seems to fail as the song immediately picks up again. Again, we have no idea what importance this section of the song serves, but it's still important to keep in mind. <laughs> That was week two of the mod. We're about halfway through it, and the story is still very mysterious, with plenty of room for interpretation. This was intentionally done, as stated by the director of the mod, Foe himself. On the roundtable story, it was not meant to be easily understood within the mod. I've learned it's very difficult to tell a cohesive story in an FNF mod without using long cutscenes or a lot of detailed song events, so I decided not to worry about it too much and just keep it to dialogue and bios. There's enough information in the mod to get a super basic outline, but the story will have a chance to properly shine within future content. I wanted to focus on the quality of the gameplay experience for the mod, so I sacrificed story a bit. In my opinion, this was a great call. Hopefully, we'll see a bit more of what the story and the world has to offer sometime soon, as there are lots and lots of content still waiting to see the light of day. But in the meantime, it'll give us time to theorize. Let's go ahead and check out the next week, which is week X, the side stories. This is the longest week in the mod, however, it's not in chronological order like the previous weeks. Hello? Are you alright? Stay back. Don't hurt me. Well, of course not. What are you doing here? Do you need help? It's too cold. 
We're back on Earth in this song, in a completely new locale. We're inside what seems to be a snowy forest in a tundra, and we fight an Alphian named Iota. He previously worked as an advisor for Epsilon, but he was quickly disturbed by Epsilon's overwhelming hatred. Shortly after, he was banished to Earth due to disobedience. This one is kind of weird because it's like, oh hey, some dude is stranded out here. Do you want any help? Oh, never mind, he just wants a rap battle. A few of these songs aren't extremely influential to the plot, they mainly serve to add some extra world building. This isn't a bad thing though. It helps tie up loose ends after the main weeks and how scant their story content was. It gives us more content, can't complain about that. His song, on the other hand, is a bop. The vocals do drown the instrumental out a tiny bit, but I guess this applies to virtually any FNF song. Despite the bleak landscape, the music is quite upbeat, using higher keys and its instrumentation to serve us as a great representation of the frigid surroundings. There's a brand new mechanic in the song too, in the form of these frozen chain notes that will block you off from pressing that certain key if you click it, requiring you to tap it repeatedly to thaw it. Overall, a great song to play, though I wonder what happened to him afterwards. He also has albinism, which is a surprisingly normal mutation considering what we've seen so far. Sorry, kid. Let's blast into the next character, Beta. Murderer for hire? He's a common business associate of Zeta. He will do anything for an opportunity to bring an end to Epsilon's role. He was hired to eliminate us and pulls absolutely no punches by starting off with shooting the accuracy bar and replacing it with three bullets. It's three strikes and you're out in this song. But thankfully, you're given leeway, as if you lose a bullet, it regenerates within 10 seconds. Of course, you're better off relying on skill, because this song is probably the most energetic in the entire mod. The notes go at blistering speeds while the music pumps up to 11 in the background. It's like something I hear in a Geometry Dash level, and I mean that with high praise. <laughs>
Uh, hello? Omega? What are you doing here? Moo? What? Don't ask. I don't have any answers. I've missed you. All of you, please forgive me for my failure. This is Mew, a long-deceased roundtable member. He was once extremely close with Epsilon. He is now stuck in a form of limbo, known as the Archive. Restless soul is unable to move on occupy the Archive. However, it's extremely difficult to get into it. Since Mew is filled with intense sorrow and regret, he's unable to let his soul move on. The song is one of the most sorrowful ones in the mod, opting for a low-key and melancholic vibe as opposed to the high-energy compositions that take place in the mod previously. But Results is not only a great breather in between the non-stop barrage of energy, but also a time to let our emotions ebb and flow, as certain notes will trigger flashback scenes that play at random. Although we can't resuscitate Mew, the best we can do is help them move on. It's the most we can do. Oh, okay, no dialogue. We just jump straight in into this one. Epsilon makes his second appearance in the mod, and this time the fight is actually playing the roundtable mix of Epsilon, which is the first appearance of the song within the mod. Strangely enough, the song isn't canon to the week at all, possibly noted by Epsilon not attacking you in the lack of dialogue. Why this was done, I'm not sure. Maybe it was to put emphasis on Epsilon since Moo's song was right before it, or maybe it was done to break some tension. Who knows, but it's Epsilon, come on. I can't complain. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
freaky on a Friday night, yeah <laughs> I am the evil Omicron, and I hereby forbid you from not playing Pong during my segments, and I wish you the worst of luck! <laughs> what... what are you... You dare enter my lair? You must leave at once and receive not my spell, lest you be cast in the forever pit, please, you must die! talk about whiplash. This is Omicron, a comically small wizard with delusions of grandeur, believing himself to be the true antagonist of the universe. You're trapped inside his evil chamber of secrets where his cauldron of evil concoctions boils and toils as the sky of Dimension Alpha shines through the shattered stained glass window. Oh yeah, as he said, he'll force you to play Pong while you're waiting for a segment to finish. There's even a CRP screen effect to go along with it. If you miss, an energy barrier will be placed on the status bar preventing you from going any more forward. This is such a cool mechanic! I've never seen anything like it in a mod before, especially the energy barrier thing. I actually conceptualized a gameplay idea like this back in 2021 when I was working on my own mod, and I'm actually surprised it's taken so long to actually see a mod make this. But yeah, Omicron is really fun and silly. I'd buy a plush of him if it existed. <laughs> And just like that, we are halfway through the mod. You thought that was a lot? We have one more week, four extra songs, and two secret songs remaining, making up 10 songs left and 22 songs altogether. This isn't the biggest mod out there, at least judging it from the musical list, of course, but the sheer quality of what we are given is leagues better than a lot of what we see in the modding community. The three years worth of effort is truly shining through, and we're not even completely done. With all that being said, let's head on to the final week of the mod, that being Week Omega, which is a remaster of the original mod that gave us all that we have today. Who the fuck is they? Hope you didn't forget, but this is Friday Night Funkin' versus Hood Roundtable. All of what we've been seeing right now is a mod to this game right here. Don't forget that. I cannot understand what you are saying. First 
first song, we have Alpha, and it features Hood. Previously, he was known as Omega, but now goes by the name Hood. He lives on Earth, formerly a member of the Round Table until its collapse. He was contacted by something or someone to inform him of Epsilon's plans. Every song of the week is composed by Ben Lab, and I don't know if this is a hot take, but these are genuinely some of the best songs they've made. Well, they made Epsilon, so it's no surprise, but still. Each song in this week contains its own unique style and are legitimate upgrades when you compare it to the original mod. It's like getting a new phone after owning one for a few years, you just have to sit back and splendor as to what you're holding, but this time it's not expensive at all. This applies to the rest of the week as well, with completely redone backgrounds featuring even more cameos as well, like Garcello and what seems to be tricky. Although, Hood's art style does stick out oddly since we've been seeing this art style for the entire mod only to be flushed back to Phantom Arcade's domain. Not a huge complaint of course, just an observation, but I digress. Back to the music, the mix of piano and EDM garnish helps characterize Hoda as just a dude who wants to have fun, and is a great way to start off the week. No dialogue this time around, we just hop right into the next song. We slow down the tempo for this one, as the usual lively music we've grown accustomed to takes a backseat. The name of the song is Hood, which fits as a theme song for him. It's still a bit more quiet, but still a bit bouncy, which shows that despite his secret of veil, Hood's a well-meaning guy. <laughs> How come your girl doesn't talk? Is she like dumb? Okay.
for the third song, we have Unveil, and Hood does just that. This isn't Hood anymore, as his true identity is shown to boyfriend and girlfriend to be Omega of the round table. The week's cheerfulness returns, and we're swung back into a buoyant groove. And when I say swing, I mean the song actually swings. A fun mixture of kicks, snares, drum samples, and even some Sega Genesis instrumentation are present in the song. Hood's, or should I say Omega's, carefree nature is perfectly encapsulated within the song. Even Girlfriend joins in midway through, which helps make the entire song feel like a collaborative effort. If this was the last song in the week, I would have been completely satisfied. <laughs> Immediately proceeding from the preceding song, we get one more rap battle as opposed to the status quo of the week only featuring three. This is the final song, Omega. A very fitting name, I might add, as Omega finally has his true namesake be re-featured. The second song was Hood's theme song, but this one is Omega's theme, if you catch my drift. To reflect this, it's the most intensive song of the week, having you make precise movements along with the addition of the ever so ambivalent double notes. In the half point, the background goes through a drastic change and turns everything black and white, having you glide through an ethereal space, as if Omega himself is taking you through it. It's an all too familiar black and white motif, a la Dimension Alpha. Now, if this is supposed to replicate Dimension Alpha itself or just serve as a homage is ultimately unexplained, and it's probably just a cool set piece to add on to the final song. With one more absolutely amazing composition, we say goodbye to Omega in the final week. <laughs>
Omega's journey may be over, but the Roundtable's Odyssey is far from the end. An Extras tab can be found in the menu, and from there you'll find some bonus goodies. You'll discover four completely new songs to play. First up is a curveball, we have Mart, a petrified abandoned husk kept alive through unknown means. If you can't tell already, this is based off of The Binding of Isaac. More specifically, he originates from the Misfits character pack, a mod for the game. Even more of a fun fact is that this is also a remake of one of Foe's older FNF mods as well, so it's a cute little homage to the creator that gets to live on through his newer projects. Up, loser. God damn it. I hate Dave and Bambi. Kill yourself. <laughs> Red Bull, a song made after the Dave and Bambi style of mods, notorious for its spammy gameplay and distinctive 3D designs for some of the characters. As I quote directly from Foe, it was put in there just to see how angry people would get. <laughs>
my heavens, what is that thing? Hello. Are you okay? Are you diseased? Do you need to see a doctor? I'm the real you. You don't exist. What? How did you do that? Do what? Shut up. Thirdly is Hood Classic, where you battle Ron from the vs. Bob mod in Hood's attire. Here's a fun fact, the poses Ron makes actually replicate Omega's original poses in the first version of the mod. By the way, during the time I'm writing this, Red Bull and Hood Classic are going to be updated and overhauled as part of a late April Fool's update, so I'll integrate something here if the update is out whenever this does come out. Last but certainly not least is Table Trouble, or is it Triple Table? I don't know, the name on this one's kind of inconsistent. It's a remix of Triple Trouble from the Versus Sonic EXE mod, replacing the characters with Roundtable members. Now, this isn't just a cute cameo they include for the sake of it, there's legitimate lore reasons as to why it's here. What we're seeing right now is an alternate timeline, where Epsilon is successful in his conquest, and manages to take down the remaining Roundtable members before they escape to Earth. That being Delta EXE, Sigma EXE, and Zeta EXE. Phi is noticeably missing from the original main cast. Maybe he escaped. The music is phenomenal, as each section of the song with a separate character changes the entire instrumental to fit them better. Delta EXE, the first to fall victim to Epsilon, retains her EDM-centric music, although in a much more melodramatic tone. <laughs> EXE, who wasn't strong enough to save himself for those he cared for, prominently presents 808s in the melody. <laughs>
blasts Zeta.exe. Through sheer force of will, he managed to survive Epsilon's attack. Although he is mortally wounded, he managed to severely damage Epsilon. The boisterous Trump is associated with him are still here, showing how even with how scathed he is, he's still standing strong. <laughs> And of course, we have Epsilon EXE as a big bad opponent. The blood of his victims are trailed on his tentacles, with only one bare tendril remaining, almost tauntingly showing what fate possibly remains for you. His sections have the usual Epsilon musical light motifs that we associate him with, same with his somber yet hopeful lo-fi sense. If you're wondering why they copied Xenophane's crystals, there's a reason for that too. This isn't a copy, as Alfian's blood is able to crystallize very soon if the skin breaks, which explains why every character is encased in them in some form or way. It's so cool how Team Phobos were able to not only make a fun remix of a song, but put their own spin on this by creating an entirely original story to back when it just a boot. Keep in mind, this is all in the extras tab. You can completely miss out on this if you just don't care to look. I applaud the roundtable devs for being able to... What's that? I missed something? Oh, right. If you beat every week, a tiny omega that hops up and down uh, shows up on the menu screen, serving as a trophy for your efforts in a way. If you click on them, however, you're greeted to a wholly different screen, asking to put in a code. Hey, this is Stickby in the post-editing process here. What was failed to be clarified was that there's an actual process when it comes to trying to find the secret codes. During the dialogue section before the Hood Classic song, Ron will show a QR code on his face. If you follow the code, it leads you to an Imgur page that has a cipher on it. I won't be getting into the semantics as to how you're able to figure out these codes, that's up to you to figure out. There is simply clarification needed as to how you're able to obtain these codes. That's all I need to say. Thank you. And also watch Stick Me and Friends episode 1 whenever it comes out. Okay, bye! And here, a couple of secret songs can be uncovered. The first one is Snod. Just kidding, it's actually this. We 
plans on Mega and Fight Sans, which makes sense because he is wearing hood adjacent attire. Musically, it's superb. Easily one of the best FNF songs with Sans that I've listened to. It's very reminiscent of Dex Arson, which I'm all here for. Guess he could say he's got a bone to pick with you. Uh, get it? Because Boater. Uh, uh. <laughs> After that is our second and final secret song. If you type in Outable, we play against the Oracle guy from the Versus Oracle guy mod. The entire art style gets a new coat of paint to better fit in with the theming as well. Epsilon even comes in halfway through and squashes him, playing the piano while Mega plays the guitar. Oh, and Epsilon just straight up eats the piano. All around, it's an excellent song and pays a homage to the source material to the T. <laughs>
But yeah, that's all that this mod has to offer. Now, after that, I'm sure you have one question. What the hell is going on? There is an underlying story throughout all this, but without the assistance of any external media regarding the mod, it can be really difficult to figure out what's happening. So I'll be explaining the story details about the mod. You thought we were done? We're only getting started. So grab a snack, a drink, and your notebook to write down your lore theories because we're about to visit the world of Dimension Alpha. The world of Versus Hood Roundtable is divided into three categories. We have the Earth we all know and inhabit, the Archive, and Dimension Alpha, a world similar to Earth's where the Alphians reside. Before Dimension Alpha, there was the god simply known as Alpha. They tried to create a completely new world, but first time around it failed, which gives us the area between worlds that we now know as the Archive. It's incredibly difficult to end up there, as you need to be in a deep sleep, coma, or even just a soul with heavy regrets to have an infinitesimal chance of ending up there. Due to these near moot chances, practically no one is in there. Second time around, Alpha was successful, and they created Dimension Alpha, filling it with flora and fauna. I'll be referring to it as DA for short from now on. To go along with it, they created the Alphians, their idealized version of what a human should look like. Alpha thought humans had a near-perfect form, but the head was a critical weak point. To rectify this, they made the Alphian's head much more compact and resistant, almost like a stone. The rest of the world is pretty identical to Earth's. As I previously mentioned, 24 separate tribes of Alphians were created, with each one representing a letter of the Greek alphabet. In order to ensure peace within the tribes, Alpha created the Round Table, a coalition of representatives of each tribe that would congregate to, in order to ensure peace and prosperity for the rest of the Alphians' future. The representatives were first handpicked by Alpha, such as Pi, and would make up the first generation of Round Table representatives. However, later on, members on a tribe would vote for candidates that should run their seats in the round table. There are a total of three generations so far, with the most recent ones being Psy, Delta, and Hood. The round table, and the rest of the residents in DA, lived in Harmony. You can already infer from this, but things fell through. There are portals littered around DA that make a clean passageway to Earth. Astounded by this discovery, Epsilon of the Roundtable was curious and wanted to know more about Earth and research it. Epsilon was able to convince another representative of the Roundtable to join him, that being Mu. Mu and Epsilon were very close friends, so it would make sense to bring him along. Earth was a wondrous new land to them on their expedition, essentially being an alien world just begging to be uncovered. The catch is that if they saw Earth as an alien world, then that can only mean that humans would see the Alphians as aliens. Aliens who wound up in the wrong place at the wrong time. The humans were hostile to this unusual species, and out of pure unfounded fear, they took the moose life. And just like that, Epsilon snapped. In an act of pure rage, he usurped the round table to be its only ruler with the help of the royal guard member, Gazai. You only had two options to choose either submit to Epsilon or be banished from DA. Being killed was entirely a possibility as well. But hold on, let me run that back. Who's Kazai? Kazai is a mysterious character, as we don't know too much about him yet, and all information about him is outside the mod. But what we do know is that he acts as an enabler for Epsilon. Whether this entire act of rebellion and violence was spearheaded by him is currently unknown, and since I don't want to spiral into theory territory too much, we're going to stick to just what we know. Epsilon would spend his time thinking of ways to enact vengeance on humanity, fixated on the notion of making them suffer as he did, but not all hope is lost, as another member of the round table is able to save some people, and that person is the one and only Omega. Although Omega wasn't able to get everybody, he was able to take Delta, Psy, Sigma, and Zeta safely to Earth. Omega soon changed his identity and went by a new alias as to not draw any extra attention to him, that name being Hood. After some time, things didn't seem to change. Both Earth and DA kept to themselves and no further conflict occurred. That was until Alpha themselves had told Omega that Epsilon was soon planning to go through with his plans of causing humanity's downfall. The only one who could stop him was Omega. And that, at least so far, is the story of Versus Hood Roundtable. And just like that, we have finally reached the end of the mod. 
Despite me being an avid FNF fan, I've never been blown away by a mod like this before. It's dripping with passion and care, and it's such a rarity to see such a big mod like this be fully completed and not be cancelled some way or another. There's been talks about the possibility of a V3 update for the mod if it blows up, which unfortunately this mod didn't hit the criteria for. To be fair, even if it did, it would still be up in the air since the developers are focusing on non-FNF projects at the moment. None of that matters to me though, since what we have already is a triumph in the modding space, far above a lot of what we have seen today. Recently, there's been a trend where FNF mods take completely new approaches to its characters and music, focusing on its own strength and details as opposed to how the earlier mods a few years ago wanted to replicate the base game. Versus HUD Roundtable is the best example of this because of how perfectly detached it is from the base game. Repeatedly, I need to remind myself sometimes that this and this are related to each other, and I'm sure some of you right now have felt the same watching this, but that's the best part. If the developers decide to make external content separately from Funkin, it could stand on its own completely independent of its origins, which I really hope happens because this entire world deserves to be seen by more people. What this mod does is special because it's not like Funkin. Funkin was able to help serve as the basis of the universe of Versus Hood and eventually Versus Hood Roundtable, and in turn, we got the best possible outcome for the mod, filled with exceptional melodies, many unique characters, a very easily accessible story, and generally great gameplay. Team Phobos has proven themselves to be talented creators, and I hope to see more of what they have planned soon, both for their roundtable and unrelated projects. Anyways, that will finally close all my thoughts on this mod. See why I like it so much? I've included links to the mod in the description if anyone ever wants to give it a shot. And with this mod sitting below its original in terms of views, it can get all the publicity it needs. I hope this was able to highlight some positivity in the FNF modding scene as we continue to wait for the next update, and that this will convince you to check out Team Phobos' work. And with that, that was Friday Night Funkin' vs. Hood Roundtable, the best FNF mod yet. Thank you so much for watching. Hope everyone that sees us has a good one, and remember, praise Epsilon. over 1,000 flight delays, so if you are waiting for a flight and it keeps getting put back, you're probably going, Aram, what the signal?